Hey guys, how is it going? Jackadunga here. Hope you enjoyed that Russian communist music in the background. Uh, perfectly selected here for our victory against Russian Empire. Crunch time winning 88-87 here. What a war. What a war this was. I streamed this on Twitch and oh my god, it was an exciting finale. Uh, you can see just an amazing score. Two amazing clans going up against each, uh, up against each other. Russian Empire. Game oh so close to winning this one. Uh, you can see Ploy there picking up an 11v11. It would come down to 11v11s in the end, but it was uh, crunch time who would pit Russian Empire to the post here. Two 11v11s of their own. Uh, we'll go through a few of the stats. 8 out of 17 was the final 10v10 total for crunch time. Uh, they finished with 5 10v10s on their own, so uh, both sides hitting quite high. 70%. For the 9v9s on both sides, good job to them. Uh, but you can see no dips were failed. And two 11v11s uh, for crunch time would seal it. And we're going to show both these 11v11s right now. Starting off with Mr. Azuka here. Uh, coming in with this early CC lure. He's going to come in with a spam la low. It's going to be perfection here. Uh, not actually with the suicide though. He doesn't manage to get the queen, which I see was the plan here. Uh, he does have a bit of a trouble uh, with this dragon, which actually does float outside of the poison. He wants to try and encompass that queen as well, but he's just going to be a bit out here. And we'll speed this a little bit along as the king does fall. But you can see the queen's going to take out nothing but that witch here with this suicide. Not going to pick up that queen, but it's not going to be too much of a problem here. He's going to get one swipe at that level 50 queen. Uh, but apart from that, he's going to spam Lalo the rest of this base, starting off with two loons in the corner, uh, dropping on these two mortars. Uh, going to have a Tesla pop up there, I believe. Yep, uh, there it comes. But then here comes this surgical loon deployment coming in here perfectly. Uh, look at that. Uh, the three lanes being pressed into this base. Uh, going to start off with two haste. Coming in towards this eagle, he's going to have two... Uh, Five, six loons coming in here, and then he's going to drop that clone spell perfectly on that eagle uh, so that he can get a very large pack of loons coming in through this core. He's got two singles to deal with, but not going to be too much of a problem here. Perfect ground warden ability coming in here, and he's going to have a bit of a trouble getting down these air defenses in the end, especially this one in this uh, western corner here. Uh, going to be a bit of trouble getting that one down, but luckily a few of these loons are actually going to go over here and take out the queen actually with the death damage, uh, which was very good indeed, and then they do take out that, those final air defences and only have one archer tower left to go. So this was the 11v11 which won the war actually, Azuka picking this one up uh, to clinch it. Uh, they couldn't get, uh, they couldn't actually win this war due to the percent uh, that we put up. We had five 11 v 11 attempts, uh, which meant that the percentage was out of their reach, and they would have had to pick up two 11 v 11s, uh, even if we hadn't uh, to try and beat us. But Azuka picking this one up, nicely done to him. 36 loons you saw come in there, but MJ is going to be our other 11 v 11 you probably would have guessed it here it's going to be a bowler smash uh, coming in through this he's going to drop one golem on this south side one golem on this west side and then 10 giants through this arch tower compartment and he's just going to run havoc through this base there this was the final minute of war and he did seal the deal here with this very nice 11 v 11 uh nice jump spell accessing this space and everything is going to push through this core here not going to need much to go around the right and left. The majority of stuff here is in this core compartment with the Town Hall. A perfect Grand Warden ability, helping negate the damage from the giant bombs which are popping off everywhere around this base in this core. Uh, going to drop another giant over the Eagle Artillery. Uh, you can see five giant bombs in that core. Uh, a Valk uh, murder site there. Uh, but he's going to push through here. He's got that heal which uh, negated the damage there. And the king's coming through this back end. Of course, there's not too many buildings here on this back end, defense-wise. Uh, he's not going to have too much of a problem here to push through. He has run out of spells, though. Uh, majority being used in that core, of course, uh, due to the amount of damage which uh, could be uh, taken there. But he does have the queen, still has his ability left in hand. Uh, going to be a triple. He's only got three archer towers. Uh, he's got that wizard tower to deal with as well. Uh, but not going to be a problem with the ability. If he didn't have the ability, might have had a bit more of a problem here. Uh, but not going to be a problem. We've got the skeletons tanking as well. Nicely done to MJ here, who's going to seal the deal here with a nice 11 v 11. Congratulations to the two 11 v 11s. We're going to move on to the 10 v 10 game now. We have number 6 and number 15 to show you this week. Uh, I believe it is going to be... 
Xander D is going to be, of course, Angel. Uh, coming, going to come in here on this base. Going to be a max tier three base. Uh, going to be an interesting one, actually. I don't usually see this from uh, Angel coming in with a bit of a bowler smasher game, but this time with the Queen Walk as well. Quite a strange comp, actually. I don't usually see this very often. Uh, but he's using the Queen on the outside here just for the funnel. He doesn't want to pop that Lava Hound. Actually using that Bowler to clip that Bomb Tower and uh, managing to take that down as well, which is a very nice bit of value there to start us off here. And then here comes the remainder of the Bowlers. Uh, they're going to be dropped on that Mortar and then they're going to come in towards the Cannon and the Archer Tower here. Uh, drops a Jump Spell. Uh, going to be a pretty nice entry coming through here. Towards this multi-target, actually, he does have the market multi-target to deal with, but he does have those two heals to negate the damage. Um, and he's going to come in here towards this queen and going to take her down. Here comes the rage spell, uh, going to be dropped here through this core. He's going to have a few giant bombs popping off around this section. Uh, but here comes the queen, going to drop the uh, inferno tower here. That single target going to go down. Um, and with that, he's actually not going to have too many spells left. He's got the King and the Golem doing a nice bit of damage, but you see the Splash is taken care of here, uh, which is good for him. He's got a few bowlers to deal with there. They're going to take down the Arch Tower and the Cannon, uh, but the Queen's actually going to do the rest of the work here. I think uh, the Cannons are mostly taken out. He only has three real defences to deal with, that Bomb Tower, that's Tesla, and that Arch Tower. And this is going to be a triple here from Angel. Really nicely done to him. Right, we have another 10v10 to show you. We're going to go on to number 15 this time. He hits the Queen ability, and that Mortar goes down. Let's go over there right now. Uh, I believe it was Angel again, but he had some very nice 10v10s this war, so I think we'll show it. Uh, this one was a nice, uh, well, it's going to be a, well, it would be a Go-Bo-Ho, but it's uh, it got the Giants in there, so I guess it's a G-Bo-Ho. Uh, here comes the first section of balloons he's actually going to uh he didn't realize there was a black air mine there so actually that tesla's not going to quite go down here he does send a hog in though uh so that he does take out that tesla you're only going to need one swipe there he's going to let the wizard work down here we're going to speed it up a little bit he just lets him work down and then he drops the giants here uh the giant's going to come in here to tank for his queen and his bowlers and he's going to have the king dropped behind as well here comes the jump spell he's dropping that down here he's got a rage spell as well coming in through here he's got a soft cc to deal with which is quite helpful especially with this weird two baby dragon cc a bit odd here but the queen's going to fall down his kill squad's going to get a lot of value coming in towards here which is going to go down as well. The bowl is still pushing through and the hogs are placed here. First of all, in this south compartment with these three archer towers and he's going into this inferno tower. The king is going to go down as well. The queen actually manages to pick him up. Uh, so a really nice bit of value with his kill squad. Going to come down here. He's going to reinforce with his CC hogs down at this arch tower level. Uh, drops a heal there on that max inferno. And then here comes two other hogs uh, to back up here. He's got to drop that heal on this wizard tower bomb tower section, unfortunately, due to the fact uh, there was a sort of giant bomb and then the bomb tower, which both went off at the same time. But look how many hogs he has left up coming in through here. He must have about 15 of them still alive. Uh, so there they go towards this archer tower and then towards these last cannons. A nice triple here. Great execution here from Angel. Uh, picking up another 10v10. Uh, adding to the 8 10v10s in total which we got in this war. And last but by no means least, we're going to go on to the 9v9s of course. Uh, we're going to show them off. Uh, going to start off uh, showing off the 6 packs actually. Let's have a look of course. Uh, myself picking up one. Uh, we have, oh my god, Lennit picked up the luckiest one I've ever seen. Uh, Lennit picking up a uh, 6 pack. Uh, Mob also picking up a six pack, a very lucky attack as well I saw with the witches. Angel picks up one, Tango, and uh, that shall be all there. But we're going to show off Tango this week. Of course, he's a six packer. We always show the six packers with the 9v9. He's going to hit number 22. That is not right. It's number 23. I don't know why I've written number 22 down here. But this is Nexa, we're going to call him, uh, coming in through to on this base. This base uh, held up pretty well, actually. I think it took two defenses. Uh, but Tango cleaning it up on the third time. This was the nicest executed hit, in my opinion, out of the six packers. Uh, the queen is going to come in here. Actually, with the funnel, she's going to head round here. Nice use of the queen. He's actually going to join up and follow round this base uh, to come in and actually take out this expo as well. I thought that was nice use of the queen there. Uh, dropping the three golems, of course. He's coming in with a bit of a weird composition. You don't usually see the three golems with the one lava hand backup. 
But the wall break is perfect here. He's making a really, really nice funnel coming in here uh, towards this soft CC, which has actually come out. He's not going to quite break through here, unfortunately. It's a very tough wall break there, I actually got to say. But he's actually going to drop the jump earlier instead. You can see the witch, the queen, gets so much value there. She even takes out the witch as well. Uh, but you can see, despite the king and the bowlers, like, sort of a... Uh, going around uh, the edge of that wall, they're going to come back in because the funnel is just too good uh, for them to go anywhere else. They're going to get trapped in this compartment a little bit here uh, due to that jump having to be placed a little bit early, but the king's not going to have too much of a trouble uh, breaking through here. Queen, unfortunately, going to go for a bit of a wonder there, uh, not going to take down that final air defense. She's going to take a bit longer to do that. Uh, but here comes Delala. Of course, he's only got the 10 loons, so he's got to be very careful here with his drops. Uh, going to drop a haste here. Uh, unfortunately, he gets a red air bomb there around the outside. The wizard tower going to do a little bit of damage here. Uh, but here comes the lava hound. The queen helps take down that air defense. And he's just going to slowly wait to drop that last haste spell. He's still got a max lava hound tanking. Not max lava hound, actually. Uh, just a normal lava hound tanking. That is going to split. Uh, but this final haste is going to be key. The queen takes down that expo. Queen's still going around this base. She's done an unbelievable amount of work there. Uh, but it's just going to be that wizard tower left up. Uh, which is not going to be quite taken down here uh, at the end, but the Queen's going to do the rest of the job. I thought this was a uh, nice hit, though, in the end. Despite not having too much left up, he's going to take down that Wizard Tower with the Queen, and it's going to be GG. Nice triple here, and of course, a very, very nice win for Crunch Time, going 2-0 in Apex. And that shall be all from me for now. I hope you did enjoy this repack. I will get War Bears out some point. They won in week one, obviously, uh, beating them by one star. Uh, 98, and I think it was a 99-98 victory against them. I'll produce that at some point. But for now, I shall leave you there. I hope you did enjoy the video. If you did, leave a like. Subscribe to the channel for more UKWA and Clantanamo Bay action. And I hope to see you in the next video. Thank you very much for watching, guys.